All right, Paul, so let's start with the kind of practical ideas where we're really changing the way we get more VE. Okay. Now, we know that there's a way to get much more VE, which is to use an ion drive. Yes, that's right. And that gets up to maybe 40 kilometers a second. So, I mean, that's... It's a factor a of lot 10. Better, a lot better than four. Yeah, but... But I did the calculation for this, and you'd still need more xenon than the entire mass of the Earth. All right. So uh, okay, so that's not going to work. It's not enough. All right. Um, and it also has the problem that you can't fire plasma out fast enough because uh, you're limited by the power generated by yes, solar cells. That's right. And also, if you're trying to go interstellar, remember these things have a very low thrust. Yes. They need to fire for a long time. But if you're going off to Proxima Centauri, as you get further and further from the sun, you're going to get less and less power hitting your solar arrays. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so there's kind of a, a trade-off there. Yep. So... Something like this, where you fire particles at a very high speed, could work, but you can't rely on solar power. So you need to have another power source to, to, to get enough, so you can generate enough quickly enough at, at the beginning yes. stages. So first of all, you need more power so you can fire those that's right. faster and get you a V of like 400 rather than 40. Yep. And then you need a power source that's not going to run out as you get further that's away exactly. from the sun. Yeah. So... Of course, this power source has to be lightweight. Yes. You can't have millions of tons of fuel on your rocket, because, otherwise yeah. it just doesn't work from the same rocket equation. That's reasons. right. So what we need is something that contains a very large amount of energy in a very small mass. So, so here I've got yep. the amount of megajoules you can get yep. in one kilogram. Right. So you see a lithium-ion battery, it's yeah, one megajoule yeah. per kilogram. That's enough to power my electric car, but it's... Not uh, enough to send your electric car to Alpha Centauri. Indeed. <laughs> um, Methane plus oxygen, which is standard rocket fuel, is about 14 mm -hmm. megajoules per kilogram. So it's yep. definitely better than lithium-ion batteries. This is why you don't see battery-powered rockets. Exactly. Um, hydrogen plus oxygen is a little bit better. That's right. Hydrogen's much better, but it still has to combine with the oxygen, which brings the weight up. That's right. Um, but then look at this. You Methane. have a huge jump once you get to... So this is using essentially nuclear energy. So, yeah, so this is nuclear fission, so yep. splitting apart uranium and plutonium. And then we're talking about 80, 80 million... <laughs> That's a huge jump. And then I guess if we go to fusion, it's even better. 639 million. And the best possible thing is matter, combining matter with antimatter, which is uh, 90 billion megajoules per kilogram. Now, I guess the interesting thing is these aren't far-fetched, right? We, we've right, done the, this. These, these two we have currently in operation. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's, let's, of course, we talked earlier about nuclear yes. rockets. They are not actually currently in use, but they did actually build one and test it on the stand. Yep. This is the uh, Nerva engine. Now, that got a VE of about 10 kilometers per second. So it's not, not right. enough. This was a nuclear thermal where you just have a nuclear reactor inside and you pump fluid through it. The fluid gets hot and rushes out quickly out so the end. Pretty much very similar to nuclear power plants. Yeah, so uh, it's it, it could work, but it's not enough. Okay. Um, a way that could work better would be to have a nuclear reactor generate electricity. Yep. And then use the electricity in something like a particle accelerator or some super ion drive. Okay. So you can fire mass out at very large. So things. instead of relying on that energy from solar panels, which obviously reduce the further you go out, that A is independent on the distance and B yeah. much more energetic. Yeah, I mean it could even be like a railgun catapult that's got yeah, yeah. rocks out the back. Yep. But the rocks would have to be going very fast. But if you've got enough power, you could do it. Yep. And so this could in principle work, um, but it's definitely in the few thousand years, maybe 10,000 years to get to Proxima Centauri. I mean, it's still this. better and yeah. it's still doable. But yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, I think NASA's recently been talking about looking at this for Mars, because even though Mars is not that far away, when you talk about the health effects, if it shortens that time, yes. it's more of an interest. So that's more rockets like this, yeah. which... Or could drop the Mars trip time, trip time from six months to a month or something like Which that. Which is a big deal for but that, that's, but that's not, not going to help us. Proxima Centauri. Exactly. But there is a method that, with current technology that can get you there, and that's atomic bombs. So we're going to blow up space? Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, a normal nuclear reactor, you get a, a controlled reaction. Yes. So every nuclear splits produces neutrons that cause another nucleus to split. That's you try right. and keep it in balance by having moderators yes. and everything like this. But you can get more energy out if you just let it rip. Let it rip. That's Total right. Total chain reaction. Which and that is gives you bombs bomb. like this. And we know how to do this. There's been plenty of atomic bombs for a long time around. Mm -hmm. And this actually is a perfectly feasible way to send spacecraft around that was investigated again back in the 60s and 70s of Project Orion. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? And the basic idea is you have your spacecraft with large tanks containing lots of atomic bombs. 
So essentially... Like tens of thousands of atomic bombs. And so they're essentially blowing up but contained inside? And what you do is you fire them out the back. You've got a giant plate at the back mm -hmm. and you detonate one bomb after another out the back. Like uh, one every three seconds. Yeah, 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 okay. And the explosion hits the plate, which has to be very strong. Yes. And pushes it forward. Mm -hmm. You have to have enormous shock absorbers. Yes. Otherwise the acceleration would kill everybody on board. Yeah. But the shock absorbers damp it out. You might have a blast every few seconds. And by the time you fired off all your 10,000 atomic bombs, you're going pretty fast. So essentially, instead of chemi multiple chemical reactions, which a rocket is, these are just multiple nuclear bomb reactions. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I guess that's an idea. <laughs> uh, and if you just have fission bombs, you can get a VE of 20 to 30 kilometers yeah, per second, which but, again but, is not enough. But fusion... Fusion bombs, yeah. hydrogen bombs, thermonuclear warheads, that could do it. So, and, and look, I mean, that is a huge difference compared to the... 10 or, or, or 4 that we were talking about yes. before. And there's so much energy in this, you could afford a very large spacecraft. We're not talking about Apollo 11. Yeah. We're talking about something the size of a city. Yeah. With maybe tens of thousands of people on board weighing millions of tons. Or uh, scientific equipment or any of the other cases you may be. Yeah. So it actually makes it kind of weirdly practical. That's right. But there are, of yeah. course, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I feel there's a few problems to work through. Okay, so one problem is shielding. Yes. So a lot of atom bombs have a lot of radiation. Yep. Um, so you'd want your shock absorber to be very strong and well protected. And again, I guess if you have, if it's just like a, a satellite, for instance, that we're going to take pictures of it, you know, some of that issues are reduced. But again, that's actually feasible. I mean, you yeah. can, given you've got no real limit on weight, you can afford to put a few thousand yeah. tons of lead to shield that's true, yourself that's from true. it. That's true. That's right. A bigger problem is getting rid of the waste heat. Yeah. This is basically a heat engine. Yeah, You're yeah. trying to turn heat into motion. That's right. And heat engines are always inefficient, and a lot of the heat just comes out as heat. Yes. And so your rocket's going to get very hot, mm. and you're going to have to get rid of that heat somehow. Okay. So and you have to have elaborate cooling systems. Well, a cooling degree. system still just moves the heat from one part of the rocket to another part of the rocket. That's true. You have to radiate it away. Yeah, okay. And given how much heat's involved in getting to these speeds... It's... Um, uh, uh, Freeman Dyson did some calculations about this, mm. and the calculation was you basically need uh, thousands of square kilometers of copper radiator around your spacecraft to radiate the heat away. Okay. But you could do that, because okay. again, you've got plenty of mass to play with. Okay. It's not like all existing missions where every, every gram yeah, is yeah, yeah. valued. You're, you're essentially just blown out the budget so much it doesn't matter. Yes, or you could have some sort of ablative covering that evaporates yeah. away and carries the heat away. But getting rid of the heat is a major problem because there's going to be a lot of heat. That's right. Um, okay. Then yeah. it's actually illegal. Uh -huh. The test ban treaty means you're not allowed to test any nuclear devices in space. That's right. Um, and it still takes a thousand years to get to Proxima Centauri. Yeah, all right. So, look, in theory it could work. There's a lot of technical details to work through, but it still doesn't actually get this there in a realistic time frame. Well, I mean, if I discovered that our solar system was going to be destroyed... Yeah. This is what we'd do. Because I guess you can feel the entire those... world yeah, yeah. freaking out. You can get really large things and it would work. Yeah. And if your solar system was going to get destroyed, you probably don't care about polluting it with radioactive waste before it gets destroyed. So I guess, yeah, you're, you're arguing that, hey, if we need a, a mothership to save a lot of humanity, this would be the way to go if you don't care about the time frames, but not for really exploring another planet. That's right.